band so this week i'm inspired to talk about pizza box marching band pizza box football this week on board games with scott hi there welcome to board games with scott this is a weekly show where each week i take a game and explain it and briefly review it to help you decide if it's a game you might want to purchase this week I'm looking at a two-player game. The game is Pizza Box Football, called because it comes in a box the shape of a pizza box, and because it's about football. Now, the tagline is the strategy game for the football fan and you. When I first saw this game, I thought, well, that would not be me then. I'm not a big sports fan. I don't watch football on any sort of regular basis. Uh, the shirt's just because I went to OU and marched in the marching band, so that's the closest I have to any football spirit. But, that said, I like this game. I enjoy it. It's based around the concept of calling plays and trying to predict what you think your opponent is going to do and calling a play that will best uh, deal with that situation. You're going to have to do some risk management. You'll decide, you know, do you want to do a riskier play and hopefully do better, or do you want to do a safer play and uh, just go a few yards? It doesn't require um, knowledge of football to really enjoy the game. It can be a short game, uh, 20, 30 minutes, or a much longer game if you want to play a full game with a lot of details. There's an expansion for it, which I'll also talk about a bit later on. So why don't we open up this pizza box and have a heaping helping slice of pizza box pepperoni football. So here's all the stuff that comes with pizza box football. The game box folds out, and you've got a cardboard insert that sets into it, and this gives you your main game board. You use pegs to mark various things on the board, and uh, you're going to be moving these pegs up and down as the game goes on. The game comes with a number of dice in different sizes and colors. They are all just uh, six-sided dice. There's just different colors to uh, make different decisions throughout the game, and I'll talk about that a bit later. You've got a fairly short rule book that explains the basic rules of football, and then you've got lots of these big cards, these big laminated cards, and these come into play as the game goes on. You're going to spend a lot of time referring to tables that are on all these different cards. Now there's a pizza box football expansion and that comes with a bunch of teams. That comes with uh, 32 teams which are also represented by these cards. So again if you're playing with the expansion then you can choose a specific team and you get another card giving you some more tables for your team. The cards are well laminated because you're going to be, and it's good, you're going to be spending a lot of time handling them, staring at them, flipping them over back and forth, looking for the rule on which card was that on until you get the hang of it and rem remember which rule is where. Um, the rule book itself I found a little frustrating. In many games that have this sort of system with these cards, there's sort of a master rule book as well. One rule book you can read to understand everything. And then the cards are more like references. And in this game it's not true. Um, this just gives you enough rules to get started. There are more rules on the specific cards for specific situations. So what I found is that when you're playing, you ended up having to stop and read rules from one of these cards that were not rules that were in this book. So be warned going in that you need to not only know the rules in the book, but you also need to know the rules on the cards, or at least be prepared to sit and read the rules when you get to that event happening in the game. So things like a punt return and a kickoff and all that stuff, um, there are specific rules for each one of those things listed on one of these cards. So you'll be seeing a lot of these during the game. <laughs> um, so that's it for the components. They function. I like the board with the pegs. The pegs mean that it's a game that you could take while traveling because the pegs would stay in the board. And uh, the cards are a little unwieldy, say, for airplane use, especially these big double-sided cards, but they could work. And so it's actually a game that you could use while traveling, uh, if you didn't mind letting the world know that you are playing pizza box football. So uh, why don't I talk a bit about how this game the gameplay actually works. I'm going to first talk about the basic game, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the expanded games and the advanced games as we go along. These are the, the charts you start off with the basic game. The way the game works is the first thing that it does is the person who's defending decides what kind of play they think the other player is going to do. A run, a short pass, 
or long pass. Based upon that prediction, the defensive player will take one of these colored dice and the white die and put it in their hands. So if I think the opponent's going to run, then I would take the red die and this white die and put it in my hand and say, OK, I'm ready. And then the offensive player says what they are doing, whether they're going to run a short pass or a long pass. I then show my dice and I roll them. And based upon what I roll, I look up on the chart. So I could see from the chart then the effects. Usually the higher you roll, the better it is for the defender. And these are effects that we'll be applying. All the none means that the offensive player's play runs as normal. So the better you are at predicting what they're doing, the better chance there is that you're going to really cause some problems to their, uh, to their next step. If you are wrong, then there's a good chance that you're actually going to help them, and they're going to get a benefit in their next step. So this is the first thing you do. You look at this chart to determine the defense effect. Predict what, you're going to do, predict what you think they'll do, they call it, you roll the dice, add the numbers, and figure out the effect. The next step in is you look at this table. This tells you what the effect is of that offensive play, whether that was a run, a short pass, or a long pass. Now you remember what the modifier was from the previous roll. Many times it's plus one or minus one or uh, affects the dice in a little bit. And then the offensive player rolls three dice, so the three cubes tell you, and you look up the total. And again, higher is better. If you roll an 18, you're going to go a lot of yards. Like an 18 on a long pass is an automatic touchdown. Um, so you look at the number, and this number is going to be affected by what you saw in the earlier table. So let's say the defender predicted my play correctly, and I've got a minus 2. I roll the 3 dice, and in this case I would subtract 2 from whatever I rolled. So if I rolled a 10, I would subtract 2 to 8 to see what actually happened. And again, the lower that you go, the worse, the worse it is. So many times you're gaining some yards in these higher numbers. Down here there may be an interception um, or other bad things. And for bad things like a mishap um, or things like that, you look at another table. And again, you roll the dice and see what the table tell you. And then if it says like sack and fumble, then you go in here and you see what it is that that means. So you look on this chart, you can see sack and fumble tells you that something happened, you lose 2 and lose B, blah, blah, blah. Whenever you see a little square with the B in it like that, that means it's a bonus die. That means you roll a die, and if you roll a 6, you add 6 and roll again. You keep going until you don't roll a 6. So 3B means 3 bonus dice. It means you roll 3 dice and add them up. Any 6s are re-rolled and added. One of the things that can happen during your defensive plays is that you can cancel the effect of those Bs or actually make all dice that they roll Bs. So that can be a pretty pretty big effect. So the basic way that the play goes is each player has this play sequence card and it tells you just to go through the steps. Uh, the defensive player picks a play that they want to try and block. The offensive player calls out that play. You roll the dice first on the appropriate chart and appropriate column to see what impact the defensive play has. You then go over to the offensive play. You roll for the offensive play. You adjust it by what the defender had. You see the impact and then you move up and down on the field marker based upon how far you went. And then you mark it to the next down and you go again. That's really all there is to the basic game. Um, in the basic game, you just use this one card, you roll the dice, you call plays, you yell and shout and scream and have a great time. Now, if you're interested in getting more advanced, there are more advanced rules you can play with. As you can see, there are other advanced rules you can get into, dealing with field goals and extra points, roll the dice, look it up. Uh, recovery, roll the dice, look it up. Uh, there's a lot of that actually in the game. If, if you, these advanced rules, you just find the appropriate card, you say, all right, we're going to do a punt return, all right, here's the card, we'll roll the dice, we'll look it up. So that's what you do. This is one of the cards from the expansion. Now the expanded rules have a number of these cards for different teams. And each team has strengths and weaknesses. And you know when you sit down to play what that team's strengths and weaknesses are. So that adds some more interesting elements. Um, I know that you really like to do short passes, so I've got to figure out, well, am I going to assume you're going to do a short pass because that's the easiest play for you to complete? Or am I going to guess that you might try something different than what you're known for just to try and trick me? It adds that level. Um, the other thing it does is it adds another dimension to the play calling. Let's look more closely at one of these tables. Now this is a table from the expansion play sequence cards. Um, the way things change now is that there are six plays instead of three plays. There are the three plays that we saw before, the draw, or the run, the short pass, and the long pass. But then there are three more plays. There's a draw, there's a screen pass, and a play action. 
And these are more advanced, more risky versions of the other plays. So you've got the run and the riskier run, known as the draw. You've got the short pass and the riskier short pass, the screen pass, and the long pass, and the riskier one of those, which is the play action. Um, now based upon what you think your opponent's going to do, you've got the same, you've got defensive options, run, short pass, and long pass, run blitz, which is again a riskier stop, route jump, which is a riskier way to stop the, the short pass, and a QB blitz, riskier way to stop the long pass. And the way you indicate that is by adding a black or a white die to your hand. So if you add the white die, then you're going for the safer version of the defense. If you add the black die, you're going for the riskier version of the defense. The riskier versions work very well if you call the right combination of plays, but they are much worse if you're incorrect. So you look at this chart based upon what you decided to do and what your opponent called. Things that are in white are an advantage to the offense. Things that are in black are an advantage to the defense. Things that are in gray are an advantage to neither side. So first you figure out what the advantage is and how many levels there are. This one is a three-level advantage to defense. So that would be where you decided on the defender said run blitz and the person said I'm going to run. That's the best situation for the defense, um, so it's really going to hurt the play. Let's say that you said you were going to run blitz and they did a short pass. That is completely wrong call, so that's a three-level advantage for the white, the offensive. So what you do now is once you've determined what the advantage is for offense or defense and what the level is, then you roll your two dice and you look it up on this chart to see how it affects the play. Again, the pluses are going to be better because they're going to move it down the chart. Uh, then on the next die roll, the minuses are worse, and then you can change the effect of bonus dice as well. So it works like before, but now there's six plays to call. It makes the game a lot more interesting. So after you looked at the first table, you figured, out where, you figured out what the impact was of the defense. You then go to your offensive player team's chart, roll the three dice, move it up or down based upon the impact of the defense and see what happens. And again, these tables are going to be different for each player based upon what they're better or what they're worse at. And it tells you at the top of the chart what the people's strengths and weaknesses are. It also may change some of the other tables in the game. The short pass pressure, the mishap information, and on the back is actually another team. The plan, I would guess because of the year here, is that there will be new versions of this coming out each year to reflect the current status for the teams, which could be exciting to you if you are really into what's going on with real football. One of the other things I didn't talk about earlier that you do get with the game, if you want to track everything that's going on, you get these stat sheets that you can use to track what your plays were, what their plays were, and how many yards they got. And that can be interesting because if you track these sort of things over time, you can begin to see patterns. And when you can see patterns, that's what makes this, ty this type of game fairly interesting, when you can be predict what your opponent's going to do based upon what they've done in the past. So you've got to keep that in mind when choosing your plays, that you don't want to be too predictable. The way the basic turn works, the defender determines what play they want to try and block, the offensive player then calls out their play. You roll dice on the defense table to see the impact of the defense. You roll dice on the offense table to see how far you go. You move your peg, the appropriate number of spaces, trying to cross that first down line. You uh, track the time based upon the play that you called. You can call timeouts to uh, stop that clock and help you out a little bit. Track the score and trying to get the most number of points in four quarters. That's Pizza Box Football. You have basically one big decision to make each turn, what kind of play you're going to run, and everything else is determined by rolling dice and looking up the results on charts, um, and then using those charts to find out what dice to roll again, to figure out how far you're going to move on the board. But there's really only one point where you make a decision each play, and that's what play you're going to call. So you have to decide, does that sound interesting to you? Uh, it's something that I enjoy because I like a game that you can make a decision and then laugh and cheer as you roll dice. Um, you know, I get into cheering on good dice and rolling and getting silly and having fun with that. Uh, but if that doesn't sound appealing to you, then it's not a game you're going to enjoy. Uh, but it does get into the a lot of trying to get into your opponent's head, trying to fake them out. Uh, make clever decisions. With the more advanced games, there are a few more decisions you do get to make in dealing with the clock, uh, calling timeouts, things like that. But it really hinges around making a play and then rolling the dice to see the outcome of that play. So it's a game for two players. Uh, there are some solitaire rules as well. 
If that sounds appealing to you, then I'd say to go for it. You don't have to be a football fan to enjoy the game. You may not know what some of the terms mean, but uh, you just look up the little squares on the table and roll the dice. Um, so with that, I wonder from this company, uh, the on-the-line game company, what will be coming next, if there will be a pizza box hockey, a pizza box curling. Oh, wait, that's Crokinole. Uh, you know, or something else exciting that's put in a pizza box. But, you know, I'm a little hungry, so I think I'm going to go have some pizza box pizza. Thank you very much for coming, and I'll see you on a future week here on Board Games with Scott. If you want more information or see more of these episodes, go to BoardGamesWithScott.com. Farewell. See you later.